never met anyone as aggressive as the man Christ encountered in the country of the Gadarenes about whom we read in the Gospel today. He was obviously under the control of a demonic power that had made him a violent, screaming maniac. We are not told how the demons found their way into the man. Unfortunately, if we open the door for the devil even a bit, he will burst through it without any permission. There are many sins and practices that can give the devil a foothold. So, to mention just one, next weekend in Britain, and sadly I've also read in Greece, people will be celebrating Halloween. And we see people dressed up as witches, vampires and monsters and so on. But isn't that all just innocent fun? Most certainly not. Halloween has its roots in paganism, and it continues as a form of idolatry to worship Satan, the angel of death. And as Orthodox Christians, we must understand that taking part in these practices is, at any level, a betrayal of God and our faith. Now, while certain, Satan certainly uses demon possession to express his hatred for God and mankind, he usually does so in less spectacular ways than the demonic possession about which we read in the Gospel today. I just mentioned the celebration of Halloween. Let's mention something else. Getting people to believe that we are nothing more than accidental products of blind evolution is an idea that works very well for the devil today. Such a belief is attractive to many because it promises freedom from moral restraints and immediate satisfaction. But those who start down the broad road of what they believe is freedom are soon trapped in a lifestyle of enslaving addictions and shameless practices that actually rob them of their freedom and self-respect. And essentially, the end result is Satan has them in his power, just as he had in his power the man we read about in the Gospel today. The good news for those trapped in sin is that Jesus Christ still can deliver all who turn to him. And though we have many stories of individuals saved from demonic possession, we know many more stories of people who were delivered from self-dishonouring and self-destroying habits of life, to whom Christ gave the glorious liberty of the children of God. So having spoken about the demoniac in today's Gospel reading, what about the rest of the people of the Gadarenes, who at least outwardly were not possessed by the devil? Or maybe they were and they didn't know it. St Luke tells us, the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. One might think the locals would be happy after all they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. They had to admit this was a good thing, but still, the pigs. The, the pigs committed suicide and this was bad news. The herd of pigs was a family's business, and how are the owners supposed to survive when along comes a crazy guy who kills the herd? They just could not get over the fact that Jesus' miracle had such a negative impact. So they told Jesus he had better leave town. But since it was forbidden by the Moses, law of Moses to keep and eat pigs, why did they have pigs? Obviously, to eat them and to sell them. And Christ spoiled their illegal trade, and so they did not want him around. Although, you may read in some Bible commentaries that not all the people in the Gadarenes region were in fact Jews, they were Gentiles. But I'm assuming today that they were Jewish people who were illegally keeping pigs. Evil hates the light because it does not understand it. Most people who do not understand do not want to understand, because if you understand, you have to go to the next step and act in accordance with your understanding. And of course, we don't want to do that. Even people who call themselves Christians do not want to do that. All of us, to some extent, try to cover up knowledge so that we don't have to act in accordance with the knowledge. 
As we just said in the Lord's Prayer, we ask Christ to deliver us from the evil one. But of course, we want to do so without harming the pigs which we've unlawfully breeding, or our passions, be it anger or pride or anything else. The behaviour of the Gadarenes also helps us to figure out the behaviour of people who do not want to follow Christ. If you ask someone why they do not come to church or why they do not believe in God, they will have lots of excuses. They don't come to church because of the time or the length or the language of the service. They don't believe in God because they cannot understand so many things in the Bible. Sorry, these are lame and rather sorry excuses. But what did Christ say? Everyone that doeth like evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest. That's from St. John's Gospel. And that is exactly how the Gadarenes reacted. They wanted the light to go away so that they could hide. They thought they could hide, and they thought if Christ would go away, they could continue their trade, they could get more pigs, and they could go on with life as it was before. But there is no hiding from the knowledge of God. You can delay it for some period of time, but eventually all things will be made known, and those sins which we have not confessed and repented, these will torment us for all eternity. So, the message in today's Gospel reading is we ask God to pray that we do not become like the Gadarenes who ask Christ to depart from them but we beg him to come into our lives and to stay with us so that on judgment day we may hear him call come in blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world through the prayers of our holy fathers lord jesus christ our god have mercy upon us and